All right. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Today we will be programming this. This dragon is going to have three states. He's going to have this, which is like fire is going to be going really fast. Or he should have two other states. Um, let's see if we can all see him. This is a second state, which is uh, you know, a fire attack that summons fire from the heavens and rains on the player above. As you may know, be noticing, the fire is starting to like, it's trying to like predict where the player is going to be. You know, it's like I'm holding left, but as, see, as, uh, as you see, like fire is starting to like being created on the on the right side, you know, it's trying to like hit the player really, really, really well. And lastly, we're gonna have the slow fire attack. And for this one, yeah, it's this one. It's also gonna be try, uh, predicting the player's movement. It's trying to like throw the fire where it thinks the player is gonna be. So this one's a little bit easier though. We can make it harder if needed. This one's like a better uh, version of it. See, it's like it's trying to really predict where the player is gonna be. It doesn't want to just go. Okay, so. I'm holding up, and then those two were summoned a little bit higher. That's pretty good. Whereas this one's it's just a little bit... It's, trying, it's still predicting it, but it's just a little bit slower. So, that is um, our boss. And as you can see, he has a health, which uh, can be lowered by hitting him. Alright, let's, uh, let's get to work and see what is going on here, my dudes. Uh, oh, there we go. So, we have uh, two things. We're going to have the fireball, and we're going to have uh, the red dragon. Uh, fireball, basically, it's a uh, fireball. Yeah. Um, and it has a lot of code here, too. So, first we're going to go with uh, with the dragon, and see what exactly is... Uh, it, what's, what's going on? Alright, so the first thing we do is we initialize uh, the entity, you know, we give it some health, 45. Uh, we're going to set that health to the max health, and we're going to make sure it doesn't move at all. Then what we're going to do is we're, um, we're going to be linking it to the uh, the enemy parent. The enemy parent is another separate piece of code uh, from Ben Tutorials. If you don't have it, it's fine. Uh, we'll go over it right now. Uh, well, this initializes uh, the movement of it. And if you don't have it, here's the code for it. It's just speed, direction, friction, bounce amount, collision object. Um, these uh, variables get overwritten in the uh, the dragon. But here's like the starting er variables. We also create an enum uh, hit, which uh, is going to get like launched in the user event. Afterwards, um, here's like a destroy event that gets overwritten. It's not really important, but here's... It just creates experience and it creates the possibility of stamina or experience. You can straight up ahead, skip it, but if you don't want to skip it and check it out, um, I'll show you how it works. Uh, chance is just a, like, what's the percentage chance that we're gonna, that this is gonna uh, land? It's 70%, 70% likely. Then in the step event, we're gonna set the depth to negative y, so it like draws over things that are behind it. It gives it this nice 3D, 2.5D effect. And then we set health. Uh, this actually will get overwritten too. Actually, a lot of this stuff gets overwritten. This one is is important though. Invincible equals false. This one is there to prevent it from uh, getting it hit one every, uh, every single step. You know, it'll, it'll get hits and then for a little while it doesn't get hit, you know. Then we're going to have uh, the hitbox entity. Uh, this is going to get rover in too. Uh, this is not going to... Oh, hola, hello. <laughs> hello. Smart. Then we have the, uh, the hit state. If a move, uh, move an entity goes through, apply friction, speed to zero. Alright. So that's the uh, the parent. Now let's, uh, let's go over the create event. Here we have... Okay, so... So we know what uh, initialize hurt box entity. It just sets it to. It makes it so. If this variable is ever true, it will not get hit by hurt boxes. Then we have the initialize move in entity. The way this works is, um, this is going to start setting the speed of variables. But it, for now, it doesn't really have. It's not going to be able to move very much. A friction argument zero, balance amount argument, collision objects argument two. 
Uh, then we start setting up uh, the different states. And so far, these are all the states that are in. Uh, these are the states I plan to do, but for now, we're just going to do these states. You know, Dragon hit, sleep, idle, earthquake, fireball. Starting state is going to go. Uh, so for the starting state, we're going to start out, you know, asleep. As you saw in the uh, this little intro, you know, he doesn't automatically attack you. You know, he just, like, he's actually pretty chill. He's just there. He's minding his own business. If you notice, his eye is also closed. He's like, uh, he's almost, he's sleeping. You know, he's just, but then you like hit him. Music starts. Bam. Action. He's like, what are you doing? What are you waking me up? Attack. <laughs> you think you can just walk in on people sleeping and, uh, and wake them up? Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's, uh, let's. Punishment. Fire. Death. So, so it starts out with him asleep. You do this so the... I liked it. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> I thought it would be a really good way to start the battle. Because then the music starts out too. Cause, you know. So... Uh, state is going to equal starting state, image index equals a zero. These are going to be responsible for uh, the Z position, which is going to be the illusion that it's going to be going in the, in the Z axis. Uh, here I have uh, the things that are going to be spawning as soon as it gets destroyed. Uh, we can leave that toward the end, though. So the way this is going to work is it's going to be automatically landing a... Uh, this step event is going to be replaced with the uh, with these, you know these uh, and these are going to be like running its own separate step event. You know, it's like if the enemy is asleep, instead of running step, it runs asleep. If it's um, it's a, if it's in an idle state and it's ch uh, choosing the next attack, it's going to go here. It's not going to like run the step event. It's going to run this, and this is like makeshift step event. So for the step event, we just need to put in the variables that we know are going to be true regardless of what state he's in. And that is, uh, is depth. Depth equals negative y. So he's always drawn kind of like in front of the fireballs, depending on the where the fireballs are. Set the image speed to zero so he doesn't like blink blink and close his eyes really quickly. We're going to set the, the health less than or equal to zero. And we set the, um, so, you know, as soon as the health is less or equal to zero, we destroy ourselves. And less is just in case, like, the, he takes more than, like, he takes, like, he's, like, at negative one health, you know. So it's not exactly zero, it's just less than. And then we destroy it. And then uh, I have, like, a little animation effect that plays. Um, kind of goes like this. And the animation effect has this... It, it just has one line of code, you know? It's like, uh, it just destroys itself. So, like, it runs a, a sprite, you assign it a sprite, and then at, as soon as it's over, it just kills itself. You're like, goodbye, my dude. You did a really good job. And, uh, and here's the, the death effect. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. So, um, okay. So, if the state does not equal to no one, instead of a step event, we're going to be running the user event, you know. Um, at any point, if the dragon is uh, over the z-axis, we got to make sure that this, he gets brought down to the ground. This is going to help it. Um, if the z-axis is greater than zero, then, oh, we can actually delete this. Uh, we can start bringing him down to the ground. We are on the ground. We apply friction to move an entity, create hitbox, um, and attack the player if he gets like a little cocky and he decides to touch the dragon. And then he takes damage and he like dies. He's like, "Oh man, why did I touch the dragon? Why did I do this?" <laughs> oh boy. Um, afterwards, we're gonna create a couple of random variables. Random xd equals five. Ran x equals x plus random range. Xd negative xd positive xd. Random y is equal to y plus random range, negative xd, positive xd, plus right height, divided by 2, plus z. Uh, then we're going to create a couple of alarms, and they all do a, a couple of different things. Alarm 1 tells it how long it's going to stay in the idle state. So the way this works is as soon as it launches an attack, it's going to remain idle for a little bit. You know, it'll be like, huh, I have just finished an attack. 
I will now give the player a little breathing room and he's gonna have a great time. He's just gonna like do a couple of damage and he's just gonna take like, a breather. And then afterwards I'll choose my next attack. You know. This is responsible for how long each attack lasts. If uh, it's set to eight seconds, then after eight seconds it'll like stop the attack and then like go into idle where it'll not do anything for a couple seconds, give the player some breathing room, and then we'll choose it next attack. Uh, this is not necessary. I, I, you can delete this one. I used a different method. I had to use straddle and error. Alright, so this one's going to be kind of important. Uh, for, we need to draw the, the dragon. And we need it to do it in a kind of interesting manner. Uh, first thing we do is I give it a shadow, you know. And take notice of the point that, uh, this. What the hell? Uh, the origin point. It's here. The reason why it's like not in the center, like a good programmer, <laughs> is because that uh, if we look at the original sprite, we want the fire to kind of start from his mouth. We don't want it to start in the center. You know, we want the fire origin to start in his mouth. And the easiest way to do that is to make sure everything is like kind of at this position. Actually, it might look better if it's like over here. Yeah, that's where the fire will start. Oh, I, maybe I should, I should probably change it. Seven, seven. Yeah, I, I, I screwed all my code now. Sorry, guys. <laughs> oh, God. I hope, I'll, I'll like spitball, you know. See, I'll, I'll check and see if it looks good. And if it doesn't, I'll just change it. Um, here, I just draw text to tell... No, just, you can delete this. But this is really useful when you're balancing and seeing if it's too strong or too weak. Uh, to know how much health he has remaining. And uh, and here I just have this little variable that says draw text, uh, x plus 20, y plus 10, hp plus string, health. You know, just like, I wonder how much health he has. That's what the player is going to be like. But you as a programmer, you can like, uh, let's just figure out how much health he has and figure out if he's too easy or too hard. Then we're going to just draw a self flash. This is going to be like, this is going to be responsible for uh, when you he takes damage, he's gonna be in a flash state, right? And because of that, it's very important that he doesn't, well, he does. he's not gonna take damage when he's flashing white. And, he, and we also need to make sure we tell the player that he, he's kind of invincible for a little bit. So that's what that does. Let's go to GUI. We, we do not need draw GUI. Why don't we even have this? Delete. Goodbye. <laughs> uh, then we have O hitbox. Um, Alright, so if we have less than zero health, we're not even going to run this. This is crap code, because we're like already, like, already, uh, he's already dead. What's the purpose? Um, so, we're going to check a couple things. Um, okay, first, this is easy to explain. We need to make sure he only takes damage when he's on the ground. If he's flying in the air, it becomes super complicated. We use, like, you know, we don't want him to take damage when, while he's, like, jumping. We kind of want to give the illusion that he's on the ground and, and he can, that's that's when he takes damage, you know? So, we make sure our Z axis is equal to zero. Um, if hurt box entity can be hit by other. Uh, this basically says that if you have a, like, a collision box on your boomerang, or if you have any collision box at all in the game, um, can it, it can be hurt by it. So the way this works is, in case you don't have it, it's underscore hitbox equals to argument zero is target. And then we have another page of code that says if it is the target, and this just creates the array that puts the target in the list. And next, the, the, the amount of targets that we have. And we return if it's invincible and if it is target. Alright, so if the invincibility alarm is equal to, okay, so invincibility alarm is set to equal to true, this will just make it so he doesn't take damage anymore, like, until it's it's over. So here, uh, we can, like, kind of, we can check the intervals he takes damage, you know, you know what I mean? Like, um, if we put this to, let's say, let's, let's try 1, 0, then he's going to be taking damage every 0 0.1 interval. Uh, let's, uh, let's try it out and see how that feels. 
Yeah, so he, now he took like a lot more damage. He's like, bop, 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 bop. No, 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 there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, you might even like that even better. Just uh, quite nice. It's up to your personal preference. Uh, I think I had it to point four, but actually I like it better here. You know, it's much quicker and tells the player that yeah, you're you're doing a lot of damage. And then we we, we secretly go to the crate event and we raise this by, by like a little bit, and so the player feels like he's doing more damage, but he has like more health to compensate. You know, he's like, ha ha ha. You'll never know. <laughs> All right, so we have that and health less than equal to other dot damage okay so whatever damage the other anything else has it's it'll take damage by that uh the state is now going to go to the hit event which it'll remain invincible for a little bit uh then we're going to set the knockback direction this one has n almost none because knockback is set to zero but, but i still have it just in case i i change my mind uh, then we're going to create an animation effect that uh, is creates, creates a little, uh, creates this. It creates this for like one frame, you know, and like, it's, it creates it for two frames and it just like tells you that the boomerang has now done damage. Then we set the movement to the knockback direction, which is zero, and the other knockback, which is zero. It's, well, there is more, but it, it's not going to move. Uh, then we set the, the the effect that it takes damage with. Uh, then the, here's where I have my my screen shake. Uh, this one is, it's pretty good. Uh, the way the screen shake works is, so I have my my camera object, and target is equal to player, and screen shake is equal to zero, speed is equal to 0.1, and I have my width and height. Uh, set to the current uh, camera scale is equal to the viewport zero divided by width uh, nothing for destroy in fact I should probably delete it yeah. um, this set okay so oh actually I can like teach yeah, this, this will be for another tutorial um, so the screen shake kind of works like that Actually, I'll like explain it because we have the time. Okay, this is this looks really ghetto, you know, but like it's really effective. So, what this does is uh, is this. All right, you see how like the camera kind of like it's trying to find the the distance, kind of like in between the player and the target, you know, like, like how the camera is moving. But the camera is always like prioritizing the player rather than the cursor. You know, it's not not like following the the cursor the entire way it like it kind of sticks to the player this, that's what this does it like it makes it so the player is more prioritized than the mouse cursor and it gives you this kind of nice camera effect uh, this this changes how smooth the camera is so I have it to a really low number um, then we're gonna change the X equals lerp X camera X smooth Y lerp Y camera Y minus 8 smooth and then we have a round number variable, which is a script with this in it. Round underscore value divided by increment times increment. Clamps the X position in the view with preventing the camera from moving too far away. All right. Um, yeah, this is just the screen shake. That's what this one's responsible for. Uh, let's go back to this dragon. I feel like I'm, I'm not feeling good. Uh, all right. So. If the global dot boomerangs, uh, oh, you can just take get rid. You don't need it. this. Is like something I have for for a particular upgrade. If uh, it it returns you stamina if you take damage if you do damage with the boomerang, and then um, this kind of creates like this this uh. Okay, this one's very important. Well, not in the way you might think. This is a very very valuable piece of code that I will recommend that you always have in any of your projects. What this does is it freezes the game for just a little bit and this little freeze can be the difference between this game feeling okay versus this game feels pretty good. This, you know, 
No, it's it's slight, but this kind of just freezes the game. It's like in Game Maker 8, the, the old one, it had this uh, command called sleep, but then it was replaced with this one. But well, it was replaced with nothing. So this one kind of recreates that old uh, Game Maker uh, sleep. And you can set this to 100. It, uh, it sets it for how many like milliseconds it's gonna stay sl sleep away for. Okay, so all right, so now let's talk about the states itself. So, you know, finally the good stuff. Um, if the health is not max health, it means that he is probably taking damage. So we're gonna change to the idle state, and then we're gonna play our music. I'm gonna be using Final Spice from Toby Fox. Very good song. Very good song. Um. Alarm one is equal to one second. This is gonna um, this is gonna determine how long it's gonna be idle. So if we set this to like ten seconds, it'll be idle for ten seconds. So for this, I will give it probably three probably three seconds. Three seconds, is pretty good. Change my two seconds. All right, idle. Uh, the purpose of this is going to be to determine. Okay, let us choose an attack. All right, we're gonna. We want to attack for whatever reason. Well, yeah, we're going to choose an attack and then we're going to replace idle with another state. Um, okay, so image index equals one. This will make sure that the dragon's eyes are constant, are just open. Because, like, I have two frames I have a closed eye, open eye, closed eye. Oh, dude, look, look, he's winking at you. <laughs> it's like, how are you doing, buddy? I'm doing pretty good. Really? You are? He's like, hi. Can I get you a drink? And he's like, fluttering his eyes. He's like, oh, he's like, you know, oh, what a beautiful dragon. I love this dragon. So cute. Alright, so, then, um... We're gonna ch uh, okay. So this alarm, basically, we need to make sure that we give the player some r room to breathe, right? So alarm one is gonna be how long the dragon will remain idle for, and as you saw here, we set it to two seconds. So even though right now the uh, idle state is running, it's not going to be running until uh, two, the two seconds are over. You know, and then we can ch just. It's just very important that the player has a breathing room. Alright, so now that we uh, have this, let's uh, let's choose whatever states. And for this, I have three states that are available right now. The Earthquake, which is when he jumps in, goes to the ground, and then summons fire from the sky. Originally, those were going to be rocks, and you were going to be inside of a room, but like fire looked way cooler, and then the ex it exploded when it hit the ground. It was oh, so much better than rocks. And we have the, the Fireball Attack. This is where it's going to be like the fast fireballs. And then the dragon fire spin is going to be the, the slightly slower fire spins. Alright, so if the state is equal... To, okay. So, it's going to set it to one of these three things. Afterwards, it's going to make a check. If it's the earthquake that it chooses, it's going to run this code. If it's a fireball, it's going to run this code. And if it's a fire spin, it's going to run this code. And then we, we have a lot of unneeded code here. This is like, there we go. So, yeah, so it's gonna choose one of these, and depending on what it chooses, it's gonna run one of these, one of, or this, or this, one of, one of those three. The reason why it's gonna run one of these three is because it's gonna set up some very important uh, alarms and intervals. And, uh, for example, when he does his earthquake, remember he jumps straight up into the air, so it's very important we play a jumping sound effect, you know. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to determine how long that attack is going to last. Um, this attack in particular is going to last 10 seconds, so we set the alarm 2 equals 2 sec times 10. Then we set the fire interval. Uh, this determines how... Uh, this is uh, important because, like... This is important because this is going to determine the, the, the interval between each different fire attack. It just turns it on. Uh, the Z, uh, we set to zero, so he's like gonna start out on the floor, 
and then he's going to jump to the ground and we're going to set how much gravity and we can actually delete this we don't need this and then we do the same thing for these two pieces of code and then make sure you close it all right so i'll be talking about two attacks the earthquake and fireball because then i think you can do the fire spin yourself all right so first thing we're going to do is we're going to check the gravity um so now that we're so here we have effectively sent him straight up into the air this sets, uh, makes it so he goes to the ground now. If the Z is equal to zero and alarm two is greater than zero, this means that he has now landed on the ground and uh, alarm two, which is going to, which is, which we set here. Okay, so now for eight seconds, this piece of code is going to be running. So first we're going to create a random range and we're going to set this to N. Uh, then we're going to set the alarm 3, which we also set. This is the, the fire interval, which is turned on right now. Uh, for every quarter second, 2.5 seconds, we're going to create a, a fireball. So like 0 second, it creates a fireball. Uh, 0 0.25 seconds later, it creates another fireball. Now, those are the intervals. Uh, then this is... Uh, this Okay, so this is responsible for being able to predict where the player is going to be in the future. Um, it's kind of like this. So if we go to our player step event, we have right, we have these inputs. X input is equal to uh, well, you don't even if you don't have this. Okay x equals right it's like right oh it's, it's this so x equals keyboard check vk right and left equals keyboard check vk left so what this does is it uh it kind of gets a direction i'll just, it's, it'll be pretty easy if i kind of like open up paint and this girl So these are like the possible directions that the player can go to. Up, down, up, right, down, left, and then these like uh, other other ones. This one would be if y equals 0 and x equals 1. If x equals negative 1 and y equals 0. If <laughs> my x looks like what? If my x equals negative 1 and y equals 0, then the player is going to go left. If x equals 0 and y equals negative 1, it'll go up. And if x equals 1, y equals negative 1, then the player will go top right. That's all it does. That's all it does, okay? So like, and then you can fill out the blanks yourself, you know. Because you're a smart human being can accomplish anything. All right. So it looks at those inputs, right? Um, and then what it does is it multiplies it by 58. No, this is because uh, all of it, this is like one or negative one, and it just multiplies it by 58. It's now trying to predict where the player is going to go in the future. You know, if he he's holding, um, like, if he's holding. Um, up here, it'll multiply it by 58, and it'll multiply this by 0, so it will not affect the y-coordinates at all. It'll only affect the x-coordinates. And then, it adds it to the, uh, to the place it's gonna, th to the place where it thinks the player is gonna be going to next. And then we also add uh, a random range. So each fireball isn't exactly accurate. It all has, like, this little bit of a randomness to it, which makes it 10 times scarier. I would say, the randomness <laughs> is the is a real way of making the game scary. You know, if, if it was just this, then the, it would be very easy to predict. But because each variable has this chance of randomly going off in in somewhere else, it makes the game a lot scarier. <laughs> All right, so that's what that does. Uh, 
and then we create we do var fire equals to instance create layer oh player dot x plus x add plus ran but oh player dot y plus y add plus ran i o oh fireball okay so now we have uh, uh, all right so in our fire we're, we're going to have a couple of uh, variables and we're going to be affecting them here um i'll go over the fire in a bit so we have a uh, fire dot z z underscore is equal to 400 z speed and then uh oh just this copy it. i'll talk it over it now this essentially does the exact same thing this does right it starts it up from the sky and it like ends it on the ground that's what that does uh then we set jump flag equals to f oh we didn't need the jump flag well thank goodness we didn't delete it right we did delete it i think did we no we went we're still there okay that's good yeah, jump flag is equal to true and C underscores the arrow. Uh, this will make it so that the soon as the dragon lands on the ground, um, you play a sound effect and it only plays once. You know that that way it, it feels like the dragon is there. He's alive. He's he's part of the world. He's not just the sprite, which he is. Let's be honest. But we want to give him a little bit more life. All right. So if the attack duration is over, we're going to change our state to the dragon dot idle. Idle or alarm is going to equal to alarm one is equal to sec times three. If you type in sec and it doesn't uh, show up like my game does, the reason that is is because if uh, you need to create a macro, this is actually like when the great, okay, so come here guys, I'm, I'm going to show you a secret that game makers don't want you to know. So in scripts, right click, create a new script. And then um, copy this exactly as I have it. Hashtag macro sec game gets speed game speed underscore fps. This will make it so every time you, uh, if you want to know how long a second is going to last in your game, it'll you just have to type in second all caps, and you'll be fine. All right, so now we have effectively finished doing the earthquake. Now let's do the, the fireball. And as you can tell, it's the um, uh, exactly the same, with a couple of uh, differences here and there. Um, just copy it straight up, and because oh, most of the coding here is going to be in the uh, fireball. All right, this one's very important. Fire dot levitating. So now we have finished. We're going to look at the fireball. All right. So the fireball is going to have two different states. This one doesn't work. Don't don't worry about this one. But it just has two different states. It has the falling, which is where it's it's being created in the very top of the room, and it just falls down and then it explodes. And then we have the levitating, which is like it's like flying sort of. And then as soon as it lands on the on the wall, it'll explode. So that's what that does. All right, image speed equals one. Initialize movement entity. Hurt box movement entity apply friction we set the, the z uh, coordinates uh, we don't have a state because the state is always going to be set by the thing that's being created the thing that is creating it <laughs> uh, kaboom is equal to true this uh, this makes it so if we wanted to we could just make it so it didn't explode at the in the end you know excel acceleration well Excel is equal to 0 0.5, max speed is equal to 2. And then we're going to create the, the states. You just need to write these two down. This one, is, yeah, you just need two. And then we're going to create a uh, couple more instances. If the player exists, then uh, they're, then uh, here's the kind of like the random range of the So what this does is it looks at the player's position, and it was just created. And rather than it going straight to the player, it's going to add a little bit of random range. It can get overwritten by anything that, uh, like like the like the dragon variable. So random equal to random range, random number, x add equal to o player dot x input times seventy. Direction of player point direction. And then we have a point player. 
uh, this if it's equal to true, then it'll aim at the player. Kind of nice. And then, uh, uh, and then we can you can just use audio play sound, and then the sound ID and whatever you'd like. I use this because a lot of uh, what's going on is a lot of fireball instances are being created, and because of that, it makes the game the game audio kind of like unsure what it, it makes it kind of crappy. So well, the way I kind of remedy this is I have this audio player that is persistent and is created in my initializer. Uh, I created uh, I <laughs> it has a sound effects emitter and it has a random emitter and this one is responsible for playing all sound effects. And then in, if you do decide to create this, make sure you have the step event. And then regardless of your code, it's very important that you destroy the submitter as soon as uh, the game is over, because if you don't, it's going to create a memory leak that will lag your game and no one likes that. Alright, so now that we have created this emitter and all the good stuff that happens with the world, we will destroy the... Um, actually, let's go to the step event. This one is... Yeah, it's going to set the depth, which you might want to actually like, set to 5000. Because when the dragon starts spitting out the fireballs, it'll actually look much cooler if the fireballs are drawn on top of the dragon. Let's see. No, that's not the one I wanted. I wanted the the fire attack. Come on. Show me the fire. Come on. Show me fire. Show me fire. There we go. There we go. See? It's being drawn on top of the dragon. Let's see if we can, like... Uh... Alright, there, well, yeah, there we go. It's like being drawn on top of the dragon. If we stand on this angle, we can see. It looks much better. Oh, that looks cool. That looks so cool. I love this game. All right, so we have uh, so, this, so we then we run event user state alarm zero uh, rip. Uh, just make sure you have some piece of code here because if you don't, it'll destroy the alarm and then it'll uh, no, it won't be really good. So then we have if the state is equal to the fire dot falling, then uh, we're gonna draw the dark shadow. We want to make sure that the shadow gets drawn. And we also want to create the sprite itself that we're going to be creating. If uh, this is not being drawn, then we want to just draw self, right? We want to do these two. And then we also have to add the Z to the axis. Then if it hits a player and the state of the fire is equal to the levitating, then we're going to set this to instance destroy. If the, uh, remember, when the fire is like going to the ground, wherever you see the shadow is where the fire is actually where the fire is, but we don't want it to like attack the player until it hits the floor. So the fire will only attack the player if uh, it's in the levitating. You know, it's like it's not like falling from the from the sky. Then if it attacks uh, a solid object, it's gonna destroy itself. Um, so here's what I have for falling. It's pretty simple. It's like the exact same code we had for the dragon. With the only exception is that once uh, it hits zero, it'll destroy itself. And for levitation, we have uh, wherever the player is, we're going to start moving towards it. And we put the direction of player, excel that little uh, variable that we had, and then we also have uh, max speed. And we don't need this. This one, I just want to know. I'm working with this one. So that's what this is. And we combine this all together. And we'll have this. Thank you very much for checking out this tutorial. Bam! If this tutorial helped you out in any way, subscribe. And actually, like, 
Ask me what you would like to learn next. And whatever you... If it's something fun, I'll like... Go and make a tutorial about it. If you have any questions, ask them in the comments below. And I, or another friendly YouTube Uber, will come in and help answer. Thank you very much for coming in and watching my video. Make sure you subscribe. Have a great day. Da -da -na -na.